What's up everybody? It's Indigenous Realist to Realist. First off, man, I want to say sincerely, man, peace, halito, well met to everyone who, who may view this video, man. Know that I'm dropping this video sincerely because I'm sick of the slander. I'm sick of people dropping facts that aren't true. Today, I want to take a look into the absurd claim that masonry in and of itself is in any way related to Western Freemasonry. A lot of people who consider themselves scholars, researchers, or maybe even teachers among various groups of our people, be they Indians or Aboriginals or Indigenous or whatever else a man chooses to call himself, have erroneously spoken false teachings and spread misinformation about me being a Freemason. I consider that a direct assault against my character and my family name, which I hold up high above all things. I want to start this off with an article written by 33rd and 3rd degree Freemason and a high-ranking lodge member of many different Western Freemason lodges, including the Prince Hall Lodge, which is supposed to be a black lodge of Freemasons. That's what they say, at least. His name is Frederick L. Milliken. And he went among so-called Native Americans. And if y'all know, the so-called Native American, a.k.a. the Red Indian, the Mongoloid, they got a lot of their knowledge passed down from us, the customs, their way of life and everything, because they're only an immigrant, just like the European. But with that being said, before going on, I would like to let everyone know I, I now have a Patreon account, patreon.com slash indigenous realists. Become a patron and be a part of my family adventure. I will be showing my genealogy and my ancestors' mounds and historical sites. I'm talking about my ancestors' mounds and historical sites right within my family. None of which I will be uploading to YouTube. I will leave the link in the description. With that being said, let's read a part of this said article. I would like everyone to be patient and truly listen to what's being said. The scope of this subject is so large that more than once in my research, I got sidetracked on trivial dead-end issues. For instance, I spent hours trying to track down verification that Freemasonry existed in North America before any European white man landed here. Well, there is absolutely no proof that Native Americans did not get Freemasonry from the white man. But one factor that makes life difficult for the researcher is the lack of written records by the American Indian. Native Americans did not write down anything. In fact, it was not until 1920 that written records were kept by Indians. That is probably only due to their homogenization into general society. Everything was passed down by word of mouth. Sound familiar? So there will be many areas and much information that will be covered in this paper. We will confine ourselves to similarities of Indian customs and more with Freemasonry and some of their secret societies. Okay, that's the first part of the article, y'all. And right there, I want to stop, y'all, to give y'all a brief lesson on the differences between Masonry and Freemasonry. Freemasonry is often dramatically emphasized as being some mystical group of powerful white men who secretly run the world. Well, in fact, they actually are. The key factor in that statement I just made is white, as in white man. That's who it is. Freemasons can only be white men. White, we all know, is just a title. White means purity. Purity means God, and God means ruler of the land, whether you know that or not. That's according to Freemasonry and Professor Drew, a master etymologist. A so-called black man is a plague on the planet Earth and needs to be extinct, according to modern Freemasons. Actually, Freemasons are the makers of both the terms white and black, being used to describe the pale-skinned European immigrant, i.e. white man, and the copper color indigenous aboriginal, i.e. the black man. We can't forget that they also made the Native American, i.e. the red man, who is also an immigrant to these lands and who are not, in fact, aboriginals nor indigenous. See, Freemasonry, beyond popular belief, is a group that was created in its American form for the sole purpose of keeping the indigenous aboriginals from knowing themselves and ever attaining the proper knowledge of self. A lot of leaders who have came in a personage of savior for our people were, in fact, initiates in the rites within modern Western Freemasons. 
all of them have been unknowingly puppets for the European immigrant. Don't believe me? Good, because I honestly don't expect you to. And I would like each person who is wise enough to still be in this video listening to facts instead of spooky fiction these other guys put on YouTube to check out a Florida statue in the Law Reads chapter 4281 of the Florida statutes incorporates the most worshipful Grand Lodge of free and accepted Masons consisting of Freemasons exclusively of the white race. That law applies to all lodges and Grand Lodges in the America. And this statute has been in effect since 1893. Look it up. Moving along, Freemasons in their current state of existence as American Freemasons are actually called Washington Freemasons. Check out this clip from my video where I broke this fact down a month ago, which is George Washington. Freemasonry played a role in George Washington's life from the age of 20 when he first became an entered apprentice in the Fredericksburg Lodge until the day he died when a brother in his Alexandria Lodge was one of the three doctors at his bedside. I bet you didn't know that. See, the roots of Freemasonry lie right here in America, but people don't know that. But Freemasonry was made for and by free white men. And free white men is only a term used here in America, a.k.a. the U.S. But I must also state Washington is actually not an English word. It's actually a word that derives from two separate words in Arabic, which was Wa and Shaitan. Wa being the and Shaitan meaning the devil. And not just a, a mystical devil as far as a jinn or a bliss, but the actual devil because shaitan means thing of clay. Shaitan is a derivative of two words, shay and tan. Also take a look at so-called Uncle Sam and notice that Sam is also a word in Arabic for the devil. Samael or the Sam. And also look at his resemblance to the Baphomet. As you can see from the timestamp of that video clip, you will see that I made that video on December 20th. I've also spoken of the differences between Masonry and European Freemasonry numerous of times on my platform and other platforms. Moving along, a lot of Western Freemasons don't know their real roots because they haven't reached high enough degrees or they haven't entered the shrine. The shrine is a group of pale-skinned Europeans who dress up like Arabs and make a mockery of Allah, Muhammad, and the Quran. They are the keepers of the most sacred customs and history of European and Washington Freemasons. Check out this clip from my Christopher Columbus video where I show you the origins of this modern Freemasonry here in America. I will leave a link in the description for this full video and my other videos pertaining to this subject for further studies for those secrets of truth. King John II hired Christopher Columbus to be a merchant, right? Well, let's look at the etymology of merchant. See, merchant is not a new word at all. It comes from two words, mer, which means to disappear or vanish. This term was originally used as a noun describing a seafaring group of people. It also can be found present in the word marin, which means to disappear. Be on the lookout for my next video entitled, What Happened to the Mer? The second word is chant, which means to celebrate or sing. See, merchants through history are known to be traders or barterers, but that is a misnomer. And it's not misnomer accidentally either. The real merchants were created by John II of Portugal. John summoned his assembly at Evora, November 1481, and imposed a drastic oath of obedience on his vassals. He also reasserted the Bene Placid. Notice, 1481 is also the year he established the castle fortress in Ghana. A coincidence, right? No, it was not a coincidence, but there's no time for that. The oath spoken of is the exact same oath that all Freemasons must take now. Bene Placid was a mandate to withhold all information to the Pope. From the Bene Placid comes modern day censorship by way of every piece of mail being scanned and all communication monitored, etc. See, the word Mason is commonly accepted as meaning my son. We all know that, right? But how would you like to know Mason is originally drawn from mercy? My son, mer son, merchant, my son. I'll let you all figure out that one. Moving along. See, Christopher Columbus was actually an initiated Mason. He was initiated four years prior to the initiation of Portugal seamen. 
See, King John made it mandatory that all seafaring men under his rule became initiates. Thus comes the term vessel stemming from King John's vassal. The merchants were sent out daily to go and search for murs. He knew from his grandfather before him of the seafarers who called themselves murs. So he sent merchants out to find them or their homelands. See, murs coined to vanish, right? Because the original murs would sail in from all directions and state, bringing sciences and mathematics and culture until they were bored with the people and they simply vanished. No one ever knew where the merge went. But enough about them, let's get back to Columbus. Columbus was given full access to maps and all literature of that day to find any clue that he could of the location of the fabled Merz homeland. The reason for 1481 Oath was because Columbus had found a map unlike any other. A map that showed South America as a landmass that he couldn't verify on any other map. I have to pause again. Has anyone ever wondered why Christopher Columbus couldn't find North America? Or why he didn't chart North America? That's because he never knew it existed. And if you haven't thought about it, I have. And it turns out that he never even tried because he was traveling for the sole purpose of finding South America, thinking it was the home of the Mervs. Sorry to everyone who thought I was going to say that the original home of Mervs in their fable ancient land was America, but it is not. That's a story for another day. See, a lot of people accuse me and shoot slugs, suggesting that I am a Freemason. They only do it out of hate, pure hate. None of my family members are initiates of Freemasonry nor any other fraternal order. And I'm going to say that again. None of my family members are initiates of Freemasonry nor any other fraternal order. Period. Let me read some more of the article from the high-ranking member of Freemasonry on his studies of the so-called Native American and their Masonic customs. Bear with me, everyone, because here you will gain true knowledge about ancient masonry in contrast to modern Freemasonry and be able to make your own deductions. But for the sake of making this video as short as possible, I will not be reading the whole of the article, but the link will be in the description. He goes on to state, there seems to be a sacred number in many religions, in binding societies, even in certain cultures. In the Hebrew scripture, the number is seven. It's said to occur over 360 times. Masonry reveres numbers and so does American Indian. For Masonry, it is the number three. For the Indian, it is the number four. See, this is key because right here, in this excerpt I just read, you will find that Masonry and Freemasonry don't even share the same sacred numbers. That's very key. Here's some more from the article. In light of current scholarship, not to mention common sense, it is obviously absurd to claim that the Native American practiced Freemasonry prior to the advent of European settlers. However, if seriously examined, there emerged many notable parallels and similarities between Western initiated rites and symbols and those of Native Americans. The ghost dance of the 1850s. Now listen, y'all, I'm pausing for a second. When I say 1850s, y'all, I put an emphasis on it because this is a modern part of the rites of masonry. You get what I'm saying? This is when the, the so-called Red Indians started integrating Freemasonry with ancient masonry. And he did that by instituting the ghost dance. Okay, the ghost dance of the 1850s shows a distinct limit imitation of Freemasonry. Because of that fact, we have given it scant coverage here. Dennis Chorinke says this about Little Waters. In the case of Red Hand and his scalping, it should also be considered that scalping was not practiced in North America prior to the advent of Europeans. Well, in fact, for those that don't know, scalping used to be something that the Red Indian did whenever he caught an Aboriginal or Indigenous out and about because the white man paid for our scalps. The bear claw is just too similar to the lion's paw not to be a copycat. So we can say that Little Waters could have been corrupted by Freemasonry. A similar case can be made about the Mankani Society and many other Indian ceremonies and fraternities not mentioned here. At this point, it looks like we can definitely say there is no Indian Freemasonry. But the Midi Wewin ceremony 
presents a very different conclusion, which is why we have spent so much time on it. A factual case can be made that this ceremony was in place long before the white man set foot on North American shores. Now y'all got to analyze that. That's deep, bro. Like, See, when one actually has knowledge about masonry and Freemasonry, only then can they make the conclusion of if a person is a Mason or a Freemason. A Freemason can de not deny his fraternity, nor can he reveal as much as I do about Freemasonry because he is under penalty of death. And that's where you get the oath and obligation. Like I yell it at the top of my lungs in every video. I am not under oath and obligation. That's why I'm able to talk the way I can. Listen, if, if you really want to know it, fuck Freemasonry. I am a master mason, y'all, from the most ancient right. And I stand on that. I'm not ashamed of that. It was passed down to me from my father. And it will be passed down to my sons. Not Freemasonry, but ancient Masonry. This is part one. I will be doing another part two diving into masonry found in America long before Freemasonry came into existence. Y'all make sure you subscribe and hit that bell. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it. I'm Indigenous Realist the Realist and I'm gone. Man, I'm Indigenous the Realist, man. And shit, I'm the motherfucking Realist, man. I'ma talk about shit the mother dudes can't talk about. Cause I'm not under the old film by obligation. Conery. Conery. Conery, 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 Conery.